Madam Speaker, okay. I'd like to know what do you think is the biggest threat to Minnesota right yeah. now? How can we unite around that mm -hmm. and work together, all of us? Mm -hmm. What would be your strategy for solving it? Well, I think probably our largest threat to Minnesota right now is the lack of vision about where we are going in the next 10 and 20 years. And mm -hmm. I think that the next governor needs to have a vision of where we're going to be, an investment in early childhood education that's going to help all children, the economic development plan for the entire state of Minnesota. And it's been sort of a very narrow vision we've been living with here. And I think that's the biggest threat to Minnesota, is that we have been narrowed by the vision of Tim Plenty, and we really need uh, a bigger vision of Minnesota leading the way. How can you get more Minnesotans to work with you and solve that together? Oh, I think Minnesotans very much want to work on this vision. Uh -huh. This is what I hear when I'm traveling the state. Minnesotans want this sort of leadership. So I think Minnesotans are ready to go. I think it's been the leadership at the very top in the governor's office that's been limiting them. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Right. I think, what do you see as Minnesota's biggest threat? And how can we unite around it and solve it? What would be your strategy for trying to get around that threat? How can we get to it? Well, as I've traveled around the state, people often come to me and say, you know, you're the Senate tax chair. You probably understand the state's budget challenges better than the other candidates do. What's the state's biggest problem? Uh -huh. And when you don't say anything, almost immediately everybody will say, I'll bet it's the budget deficit, isn't it? Hmm. And the truth is, the budget deficit is not the state's biggest problem. It's a symptom of a larger problem. And the, the larger problem that the state has is we have an economy that is underperforming really badly. And the consequence of that is we've got 170,000 people unemployed. Uh, our income tax collections just last month in October were $58 million below forecast. Uh, the next governor is going to have to be, uh, I would call him a uniter, a problem solver. Somebody who can bring in the business community, bring in the labor community, uh, bring in suburban and urban and rural interests and figure out how we can get Minnesota's economy going uh, so that uh, we have the revenue to invest in things that we think, uh, I think that all Minnesotans think it, are important. It sounds like as well as identifying a problem, it sounds like you say that the problem is almost our strategy. Well, I think that's probably true. Uh, you know, the state does have severe challenges and, you know, just like in somebody's home or in a community, uh, when, you, when you confront serious challenges, everybody kind of has to huddle together and figure out how you collectively take it on. And I would argue that Minnesota's challenges are big enough right now that uh, people need to think about checking their partisan stripes and start thinking about the future of Minnesota. What kind of Minnesota do we want to live in? And uh, that's going to require a new tone at the Capitol. And I would argue that in those discussions, the governor is really, really important because the governor really sets the tone at the legislature. And Governor Plenty has set a pretty partisan tone. Uh, we've had a lot of gridlock because of that. You know, he's wanted things his way and been unwilling to compromise with the Democrats who control the legislature. So the, the, a lot of the work hasn't gotten done. Mm -hmm. And uh, the tone that the next governor sets, because of the challenges we face, are going to have to be, uh, it's going to be much different, much more inclusive as we try to confront Minnesota's challenges uh, collectively. Well, thank you very much. I'd like to ask you, what do you think is the biggest threat to Minnesota? What can we unite around and try and solve? And what do you think would be your strategy for trying to do that? Well, I'd say the core four issues are jobs. We have to put 216,000 Minnesotans back to work. We need to increase funding for public education, K-12, higher education, early childhood. We need to make our tax system progressive again. I know a few Republicans won't agree on that, but we've got to make the wealthiest people in Minnesota pay their fair share of taxes again. And then I believe we need national single-payer health care, so we take the profiteering out of health care and we put every dollar back into caring for people. What would be your strategy then for getting these things done? Well, to get elected first. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'll go to work like Rudy Perpich all over this state, this country, this world, to bring jobs to Minnesota. I'll propose an economic stimulus package that will use our resources at the state level in terms of a state bonding bill to put people back to work, increase the funding for highway construction, uh, mass transit. National single payer, I'll lead the way in Washington and I'll uh, expand public option here in Minnesota so that we uh, lead the way for the rest of the country in, in making health care universal coverage for everybody, uh, taking the insurance profiteering out and making it affordable for all of our citizens. I'll make progressive taxes uh, about passing through the legislature a tax bill that will increase taxes on the wealthiest 10% of the people of Minnesota. People can afford to pay their fair share. You can read my lips, tax the rich, and uh, 
they ought to be paying more, not less as they are today under Tim Pawlenty's tax shelters. So they ought to be paying their fair share of taxes. And I'll put that additional money into K-12 education, higher education, early childhood education, and uh, I'll make a promise as governor I will increase state funding for public education every year I'm governor. There'll be no exceptions and no excuses. Thanks very much. I'd like to ask you this question. What is the, the biggest threat right now, do you think, to Minnesota? And what could we unite around and really work and focus on together? And what would be your strategy for that, Steve Kelly? Well, I think the biggest challenge Minnesotans face is that uh, we have a sense that we can't get things done working together. We've had 11 years, basically, of failed leadership in the governor's office. And we need an opportunity to bring Minnesotans together around some large calls. And they ought to be around some other challenges that we face. But the biggest challenge, the one that overrides all of them, is this lack of confidence that we can do anything by working together. So I believe the next governor has got to bring people together and say, yes, there are things we can do. We can close the achievement gap. We can make sure that all Minnesotans have affordable health care. We can do something today to make sure that we don't leave our children a warmer planet uh, through the result of human uh, interference in the atmosphere. We can do things today that will help our children be better off, we will put people back to work, um, but also make sure that we're delivering justice to our future I think future that's a really interesting answer because it seems like you're sort of focusing on the strategy more than any single problem because you're saying that our strategy is almost failing every problem. Well, the, the inaction and the lack of leadership is having a, an effect on every problem. Our schools are floundering. Uh, we are cutting people off their health care, doing a range of things. We, we start off talking about uh, climate change. We set these big long-term goals, and we don't do anything today to begin the process of actually accomplishing those goals. And I think we have to restore people's confidence that we can do things today to actually achieve those goals.